I've worked three and a half years now as a psych tech at a unit that covers the southeast portion of my state. The unit I work on you can think of as the ER for psych. We admit individuals who are having mental breaks or who need help for self-harm, being disabled from their psych disorder, or harming others. The unit is freaking old, and has been around since the time of Moses it seems. Even though weird events go on, it's a pretty awesome job helping others, and I love working here while I finish going to school. I will say to start out with, that most nights on the unit are really quite boring. Naturally, with the type of individuals that can stay here, the unit can have a change in its feeling rather quickly though. I've had individuals who I've never met before know strange things about me or other patients, such as where I've buried my dogs, names of family members, or the streets that I've grown up on. You'll get a weird vibe walking by certain patients. At times, my patients will say creepy stuff such as being told the devil has sent its demons to watch me and not mess up. I witnessed a lady who came in for suicidal thoughts slowly progress to sitting in a corner and screaming no stop till she couldn't talk. This lady shouted and shrieked the same phrases over and over in an empty room. The unit also has one room that I dislike because no matter who gets assigned to stay in that room, they always seem to get much worse before they get better. The room is always cold, even when the heat comes through the vent. I can recall four patients asking to switch rooms because the shadows in the room surround them when they sleep and buzz at them at night. My most recent experience was while doing my safety check in an unoccupied room which had the door open. Previously in the shift, I knew it was locked because I had checked all the unused rooms to make sure that they were, indeed, closed and locked. I thought housekeeping had come up to clean the room, possibly, since a patient was discharged from in there the night before. Next thing I knew, I had a soap bar and a shampoo bottle thrown at me. It wasn't a joke throw either, but a rip right at me. The door slammed shut. I think a patient is in there now. I open the door to a completely empty, clean room. I lock it up, pick up the soaps, and try to tell the other tech that I'm working with what had happened. We pull up the camera and sure enough, you can watch that event unfold in the hall. Not all experiences are bad or evil on the unit. The patients will sometimes tell me that they had family that's passed on stay the night in their room and visit with them until they fall asleep. Another time I had one patient tell me that a giant white figure stood guard by their door and kept the shadow figures from coming in until they were finally able to doze off. We do have regular figures that walk the yard and hang out in the rooms. One we call the engineer because the figure is always being seen in the utility closet. The mysterious stranger resembles a character out of a game. He's a tall guy in a tannish trench coat and business hat walking the same path around three in the morning and disappears after he passes by a big elm tree. Before you come onto the unit, there's a fairly large gym to play basketball, lift weights, or exercise, which low-risk patients can use with a staff member. Before you come onto the unit, there's a fairly large gym to play basketball, lift weights, or exercise, which low-risk patients can use with a staff member. On my fourth meal break, I usually eat and do a little working out. The gym also has a radio to hook up your phone to and to jam some music. This particular time, I'm shooting hoops and listening to Metallica. My break ends, so I put the ball away and unplug my phone to leave. As the music cuts, I hear a soft voice say, keep playing. Similar story from a coworker from the same place. When she turned the music off, she heard someone picking up singing where the song had stopped. Apparently, they also enjoy music just as much as the rest of us. I work night shift at a 1920s mental hospital. 
Obviously, countless people have died here for various reasons. Hangings, a murder-suicide beatings, accidental overdose, electroshock therapy, etc. There are four floors, with the fourth floor being the well-known hot spot for paranormal activity. Me being security, I have to check it out every once in a while. The fourth floor is essentially an extremely long hallway, approximately 1800 steps. With housing units, each unit has a 5 inch thick steel door, and there's a window at the very end of the hall. They don't house patients due to the fact that the county took over a while before I started, and it's completely empty by the time third shift rolls around. The fourth floor is also the only floor in the entire complex that is completely off the ground due to the complex being built into a hill. It is also where the electroshock therapy took place a long time ago. This occurrence happened last Wednesday on third shift. I wanted to do a walk through the fourth floor that night around 3am for no reason other than I was feeling brave. I walk all the way down to the window. Eventually, as I got closer, I started seeing that the window obviously needs cleaning. When I got about five feet away, all of a sudden there was a handprint that would have been extremely noticeable from even 15 feet away. I looked at the handprint, turned around, said nope, and walked back down the hall. On my way back from the window, I peek into a side office area with my flashlight just to look. Nothing. Kept going. After a couple seconds, it sounded like someone was running up behind me, so I walked even faster because everything in my body said not to turn around. As I kept walking, I passed by a unit, and as I passed, I heard what sounded like someone punching the door. Put it up to paranoia due to the running I heard prior, that is until I passed another unit. Another loud thud, as if again someone had punched the door. So at this point, I start speed walking down the hall, and while I am, I hear footsteps following mine. Mind you, these units are not connected at all, and again, the entire floor is completely empty. That's just one of my experiences. I have also been having dreams of a white, skinny woman in a hospital gown that has black hair with bangs in her face. I always thought she was just a reoccurring person in my dreams until I talked with one of the CNAs that worked tonight in the kids' unit. I never brought her up to the CNA. We were just talking about ghosts, and she said that numerous people have said that they've seen the exact woman that I had just explained. We were just talking about ghosts, and she said that numerous people have said that they've seen the exact woman that I just explained. I then explained to the CNA in detail about how she looked in my dreams, and she just went pale and her mouth hung open. Supposedly, this ghost is extremely well known throughout the hospital by various people. People have seen her in mirrors, have been locked in bathrooms, and have seen her just walking around. But in my dreams, she always just appears or runs up to me, grabs me, and screams in my face. There was this one dream in particular where I woke up from a dream to wake up in my duplex's stairway. I walk down the stairs, because that's where my bedroom is, and walk into my bedroom. Once in there, I see my bed, my fiancé sleeping on her side of the bed, and myself also sleeping. In front of my closet, which is on my side of the bed, I see that same woman standing next to my body, just staring at me. I walk up to her, and I get the courage to ask her just who the hell she is. She looks at me, grabs me, screams in my face, then shoves me onto my bed, which is when I officially woke up at 3.15 a.m. I have no clue who this woman is at all, but I still dream about her every now and then. Every single dream is in a different place, but she's just there, and this has been going on since I started working at my job. I was a jail nurse for about three years in a correctional facility that housed approximately 1,300 inmates. Loved the job, would have stayed longer, but administration sucked. Anyhow, that's another story. I worked night shift, and I've had some really creepy things happen that just could not be rationally explained. 
I worked both booking and infirmary, but the majority of the incidents occurred in the infirmary. Okay, so I was there maybe a month. Not a new nurse, but new to corrections. Anyone who has spent any time in a jail will tell you that when those heavy doors slam shut, it is a very distinctive, definitive, loud noise. To get into the infirmary, you have to have a key or be buzzed in by a central control. So I'm sitting at my desk and I hear the metal door outside my office click, like someone from Central has unlocked it, and it opens about halfway and then just slammed shut. Now in my office, there is a huge glass window so that the nursing staff can see any inmates that are about to enter. When the door slammed, I thought it was just one of the officers messing around and I jumped up and went to the window, but no one was there. I called Central and the officer that answered sounded like I just woke him from a sound sleep and I said, ha ha, very funny. He had no idea what I was talking about. And I knew this officer, and I was surprised that he would go along with any type of prank, because frankly, he was kind of a jerk-off with absolutely no sense of humor. After that, I just thought it was some mechanical glitch. I sat down, and everything just... changed. It felt colder, and I sensed that I was being watched. I was just all around uncomfortable. I took my stethoscope from around my neck and put it on the desk and left my office to go into the medical department. I stayed in medical for a few talking to the staff in there and then went back to my office. When I walked in, I went to grab my stethoscope off the desk to check an inmate and it wasn't there. I looked on the desk, on the side, underneath, it just wasn't there. I should mention that when I left my office, I did lock the door as per protocol, and I'm the only one on the shift with the key. Now I think I'm going crazy, so I start looking everywhere, and I cannot find it. In my office, there is a large closet that holds all supplies that is also locked, with the key being on the set of keys that I carry. Anyhow, later in the shift, I needed to go into the closet and get something. I really don't remember what. And sitting in the middle of the floor is my stethoscope. I picked it up, and the heavy metal door outside my office clicks again, opens halfway, and slams shut. I locked the closet, locked my office, and went out for a smoke. I was scared shitless, but I had responsibilities and patients to look after. So I go back in, and I swear, the whole atmosphere was lighter. It was warmer, and I felt way more comfortable. When my shift was over, the central officers rewound the tapes for me, and I saw the doors just open and slam shut with not a single person near them or in the hallway. I wish I could say that that was the last time it happened, or that I got more comfortable with it. I did not, because each time it happened, it seems that the door slammed harder, and that uncomfortable feeling lasted longer and longer, almost as if I were being stalked. Things that went missing were found in different parts in the jail. My pen case in the women's wing, my med sheets in solitary central control room, my portable blood pressure cuff in the kitchen. And each and every time something of mine would show up in another part of the jail, the officers and I would look at the tapes and see no one. Remember, I said I felt like I was being stalked. Well, that's because all these things happened to me, but no other nurse who worked nights. Not one other nurse who worked on my days off had anything happen either. No doors slam, click open, shut, no stuff moving. It was just me. Every officer and every one of the medical staff who worked there well before I got there swore up and down that this kind of incident never, ever had occurred before. It got to the point for me that I started just not staying in my office. I would just get all the stuff that I needed for my shift and sit at the officer's desk. I did that until I left there and got another job. I haven't had anything like that happen ever again. I worked at a small, old hospital for a couple of years. Four floors, only two floors being used, and a small ER. 
I was a med surge RN working 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Med surge meant that we had patients who just had surgery and also patients who were just sick. Most of the patients were elderly and just sick with things like pneumonia, anemia, acute kidney failure, etc. When older folks get sick, they tend to get confused and might do or say things that they normally wouldn't. But this, whatever the hell it was, was not cool. This was mortifying, and I'm the only one who heard it. We joked that because the hospital was so old that it was creepy, specifically on the right wing of our unit, and obviously at night. Guess who got assigned the right wing that night? I got bedtime meds ready for the old folks down there and started walking down the hall with my med cart and charts for each patient. I'd received report from the previous day's RN. I'd received report from the previous day's RN that room 214 was a woman, call her Kathy, who was only 55 and in for pneumonia, completely alert and oriented. I give the patients down there their meds one by one and yeah, I'm tired and mildly annoyed that it takes room 216 over 10 minutes to swallow a plethora of pills one by one and then proceeded to pull out his IV that was delivering his antibiotics. I digress. So needless to say, it took me a little bit longer to get to room 214. She didn't seem upset, just tired. I did my assessment and she was, in fact, oriented to day, time, name, and location. I said goodnight after hanging another bag of fluids. I'm hanging out in the hall with my computer documenting my assessments, and I hear something that shook me. It sounded like whispering, but I heard more than one person doing it. I cocked my head up to hear better. I mean, it's night shift and I'm tired, so I'm making sure that I actually did hear this. I followed the noise to the outside of Kathy's room, and there seems to be a full-blown whispery conversation going on with multiple people. I couldn't make out what the different voices were saying, but it sounded like chanting of some sort. I had to make sure that I was legitimately hearing these whispers that seemed like they were coming from different people and try to make sense of it. I walked slowly past her door, which was slightly cracked open. Hoping to hear things more clearly, the whisper chanting sounds only got louder, but were still unintelligible. Kathy, who had been tucked in bed and dozing off when I saw her less than seven minutes ago, was now sitting straight up on the side of her bed, looking away from me at the wall. Doesn't sound that scary, right? Well, Kathy was unable to lift herself out of bed without assistance during my assessment. She was having labored breathing when I assessed her. Now Kathy has pulled her nasal cannula out of her nose, that plastic thing that goes around your face that has the two spouts that go up your nose to give you extra oxygen, and sat up in bed in less than seven minutes without struggle, and then she stood up, still looking away. She turned and walked to the bathroom, still without seeing me. Because she was labeled a fall risk, she shouldn't be out of bed alone. I saw her profile, and her lips were not moving. But the whispers grew louder. I panicked, but kept my cool. I briskly walked to the nurse's station and asked if a nursing assistant could please help Kathy with the restroom. I normally would do it myself, but I was rather busy and Kathy was doing quite well on her own. I was sweating, freaking out, and getting further behind on my charting. The nursing aide helped Kathy and didn't report anything unusual when I asked her how she was doing. I swear I heard those voices. They were unsettling, to say the least. I requested the left wing as often as possible after that, and eventually went on to work at a larger hospital. I work in a hospital as a nurse. I was on a row of nights, which I dread. I ended up having five patients, two of which were under care for cancer. There are two events in here from two separate nights. One. The night started normally as I assessed and passed meds to the patients and did my charting and other night duties, stocking and other stuff. Just around 11 p.m., one of my palliative patients started ringing, complaining that there was a kid running into the room laughing and playing when they should be in bed. I checked the room to make sure that there was no one in there and reassured him that there were no children in the hospital area where we were. 
I made him comfortable and left the room. He rang again. I went back to the room to see what he rang for. Agitated, he said that he was just looking to rest comfortably and that people should keep their children under control and not let them jump on his bed playing and laughing. This time, I got the chills, but again, I reassured him that there were no children since it wasn't the pediatric ward. I told him that I would bring him a sleeping pill to help him fall asleep, but that I would be a few minutes. I start walking back toward the desk and medication room to grab the pill. A bell rang. I turned around and saw that the indicator above his door was flashing. Slightly annoyed, I walked back to his room. He was agitated in his bed again and I asked him what was wrong. He again complained about the kid. He said he was just in there again. I leaned over the bed and calmly explained, there are no children in this hospital, look, you need to get some rest. He replied loudly, he is standing right behind you. I stood up instantly and slowly turned around. Creeped out, I turned to face the patient and before I could speak, he says, he ran into the closet, referring to the lockers where patients can store items. I slowly opened the locker and saw that his jacket was swinging, but no one was in there. I turned and told him that there was no one. I rushed into the med room to give him that sleeping pill. Two. This will be a short one. I came out of one of my patient's rooms and was sanitizing my hands, but facing the wall. As I was rubbing my hands together, I noticed the shadow of someone walk out of the room next door and then walk into the room across from it as I turned to see. I went into the room where I had seen it go. I asked the patient, who wasn't one of mine, if anyone had come in there. She replied no, but with a shaky voice. I checked the room to make sure that there was indeed no one. I left that room and went into the room where it had came from. I looked around, but again, no one was in there. I checked the patient, who again was not assigned to me, and found that he had died. He was palliative. I walked out of the room immediately to inform the nurse who had the patient that he had died. She asked me to come with her to check the patient because she had been having creepy vibes every time she went in there. I agreed, and we went. She did the assessment where you listen for a full minute. When she was done, we heard knocking on the wall. She said, see, it's creepy. I didn't think anything of it until she said, we are on the fourth floor and on the other side of that wall is the outside of the building. We quickly left the room. Four of us came in there to shroud the body. All the guards at my workplace know this theater is haunted. We're all used to the super eerie feelings down in the lower levels, backstage areas. Most of it can be passed off as long work hour stress, but there is definitely some evil shit in this building with us. It's probably an entity that's latched itself onto themes like theatrics and whatnot, I don't know. We got all kinds of stories. We have all heard the grand piano playing on its own in the night, heard ghostly voices arguing every now and then as we walk through the halls. Sometimes I smell a harsh burning in the halls at night, like sulfur. We all know that doesn't mean well. Tonight has been the worst it's ever been. I heard a door slam shut nearby as I was patrolling, and as a joke, I yelled out, Who it be? Inside joke with me and my friends to lighten my nerves and I heard a deep, almost unintelligible male voice saying, it be me. Sounds kind of funny, but I did not enjoy that. My Bluetooth headphones blatantly refused to work tonight. I also walked through one of the function halls in the darkness. Once the building closes, we patrol without many lights on, other than the occasional safety lights here and there, and I saw something following me in the mirror. I refused to look behind me or stare at the mirror too long, but it appeared to be a figure clearly dressed in the costume of like a king with a fur robe and a black jagged crown. Its head was tilting side to side as it shuffled along behind me, kind of like a wind-up toy. It moved so soundlessly that I was pretty startled by it. 
I couldn't feel my legs out of dread, so I didn't even stop walking. I just stopped looking immediately, and calmly kept the same pace on my way out of the room, pretending to see nothing. I think this is happening due to the current performance of a really old and famous play called Faust. A very famous actor died performing it here in Melbourne a long time ago in another theater nearby and his ghost and his ghost allegedly haunts the theater to this day. It's not far down the road from our theater. There is also a secret warehouse on the site, the location of which for obvious reasons we do not share with the public. But this warehouse is basically a storage room full of really old and valuable artifacts that have to do with early modern theater and music. Authentic historical pieces like 18th century instruments and old chests and trunks that belong to people of fame. One-of-a-kind tapes recorded by famous rock and blues musicians. Old stage set models, some dating back all the way to the 1800s. It's crazy. I know for a fact that some of these old artifacts bring with them the presence of beings potentially even older than they are. You couldn't pay me to open some of these creepy looking trunks. Safe to say I'm glad I'm casual now and no longer work full time. I've been working here for almost a year. It's hands down the most haunting place that I have ever experienced. I work in a place with five floors and a basement. It used to be a house for nuns and priests. I have divided the story into small parts describing everything I've seen on each floor. I got called up for a night shift since a colleague called in sick. I've never done a night shift here, so I took up the opportunity to see what it was like. Fourth floor. Doing your rounds isn't the creepiest thing at all. The creepiest thing is going down the stairs again. You will see a black figure walking the hallway. Just your average shadow, you know. Well, thing is, the lift sometimes randomly goes to that floor during the night, as if someone is calling it. Third floor. Doing your rounds gets a little weirder here, since it seems as though you aren't alone whilst on the floor. You will hear footsteps and see shadows on the wall walking past you. Second floor. Exactly the same as third floor except for one painting. It has a woman in it that sometimes changes position or even completely disappears. First floor. You will sometimes hear the piano play a D note on the floor above you. Main floor. There is a black leather couch in the hallway where you will sometimes find a see-through man sitting with a cigar and newspaper. He smiles and disappears when you greet him. Basement. The helpful poltergeist resides here. This is the place where before my current company took up the building, the morgue was. There currently are our storage rooms, but the rooms aren't marked with what is in them. But that doesn't matter, because the night shift always gets knocks on the door to indicate where the item is. I was making rounds in the dark hall of the nursing home, mostly to help out with incontinence and bathroom breaks. There's only one aide per hall. I went into the room of two ladies. One was sound asleep. The other was awake. She had some slight dementia. The curtains are attached to the ceiling for privacy, much like a hospital. I went into her side of the curtains, leaving a small gap open, and told her that I was there to help her. She said, okay, but can you please close the curtains all the way? I don't want him to see us. I immediately got goosebumps and asked who, and she said the man right there with the hat, and I followed her pointed finger to the small gap in the curtain that I had left open. I could see that there was a mirror, and in the reflection of that mirror, an empty chair facing us. I immediately closed the curtain and was slightly nervous for the rest of my shift.
All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed these true scary stories, and if you did, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons for me, along with that notification bell to stay updated on all the latest content. To have your own horror story featured, feel free to submit it to me via the email included below in the description. Also down there, you can find the links to other playlists with lots more awesome, creepy content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Until then, don't forget to embrace the terror.